Hi, this is Sumit. You're listening to me on Taking It Slow. Had a great fun today. And if you like the content, hit like, subscribe, and share. Our guest today is the highest ranked Indian lawn tennis singles player. He ranked world number 122 in 2020 when he also became the first Indian to win a first round match at a Grand Slam for over seven years. In 2019, there was a small feat of taking a set of Roger Federer as well. He's a regular in India's Davis Cup side. In the last Olympics, he became the first Indian player to win a single match in 25 long years. He's a boys doubles Wimbledon winner, an avid video gamer, but most importantly, a wonderful human being. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome on the Taking It Slow podcast, Sumit Nagal. Hey, Mr. Sumit, how are you, man? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for the thanks for the good words. Pleasure <laughs> <laughs> uh, is all mine, man. I'm looking forward to this uh, this podcast, this conversation between us. So after seventeen thousand attempts, we've finally <laughs> finally yeah, got hopefully. it to work. Finally, the the internet gods have blessed us. <laughs> hopefully, it lasts longer. Hopefully, nobody calls <laughs> me on this phone. <laughs> 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 so, Sumit, uh, you've recently undergone a hip surgery. Uh, that's why you've been out of action for a while as well. How's recovery coming along? How are you feeling? Recovery is, is, is coming fine. Um, I think I'm in, in, I'm in my ninth week now. Uh, hmm. I'm in Bangalore doing rehab with one of my friends, uh, Yash Pandey. He has his own clinic called uh, Peak Performance. So he's been taking care of my rehab. Going to be here for another three weeks and then start to... Start to uh, <clears throat> start to look into going back to Germany and, and try some tennis. want to dwell a little deeper uh, on the injury aspect as well. Uh, so obviously, you are an athlete who is performing to the peak of his abilities as far as their body is concerned. Anything goes wrong with your body, your body has to be in per- the perfect shape because of the stress that you put it in. Uh, anything goes right. wrong with your body, do, do uh, mental doubts creep in? Uh, of how it is going to affect you for a long term or are you scared of acknowledging it for a while yeah to be honest yeah because i i very well know this question because that's how i felt it this year i mean last year um uh, because i found out about this injury in in jan 2021 Mm -hmm. and it took me three months four months to figure it out what exactly do i need to do i tried everything which was doing rehab taking weeks of trying medicine injection uh Mm -hmm. But nothing worked out. So I had to make a choice in, in, in summer, either to do the surgery in summer or wait it out. To do it in the summer was uh, then I would I would miss out on the Olympics. So we decided that yeah. we do it after the US Open, uh, play a bit and then and then do the surgery. So you were playing through mental, pain through the Olympics. Right, right. I played almost eight wow. months. So talking about this mental aspect. There were times where there were games, uh, matches where I didn't even want to go on the court because it. I had some days were so bad where I could literally, I could barely run to my forehand side, or even serve. So I, and that you know, going to a tennis match where you don't have confidence in yourself, it's very very tough because then it just becomes, it just becomes two against one because one you're fighting against mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Which is the yeah. which is the bigger problem than than yeah. worrying yeah. about the yeah so yes I did feel that and I'm glad like I'm glad that I I me and my team took the decision to get a surgery done and fi- finish finish it off with this pain hopefully when I come back I don't have pain so I can play some <laughs> tennis pain free so is is it is it difficult to accept that yes <clears throat> I'm going to take some some time off there is going to be a lengthy period of rehab uh, I mean you you would be probably off the court for say six odd months uh, when you start to come back uh, there are always going to be doubts whether your level would remain the same whether you so you were in the peak of your prowess when you suffered this injury and yes and that was a sad part because i know i was playing well and uh, i was i had uh, just reached my first quarter final in an atp event i was playing well but the yeah. pain wasn't going down so I you know mm. two three two three tournaments I played with painkillers and all, but after that it was just it was just was wasn't a good days. I was not having good days. Um, uh, I think I was very desperate to to get rid of this pain. So I said, okay, if, even if I have to take five months off, I will do it. Then rather than to play play in pain like this. So I think in one way, 
I was okay with it. And second, another way, of course, like not playing tennis for six months, you looking at your ranking going down week by week. Yeah, you know, it's it's yeah. just not easy. You know, missing out on Slam. I'm, I missed out on Australia. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. miss out on another another four or five uh, clay tournaments in February in South America, which is one of my favorite places to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's a little bit tough, but like I said, I did, just didn't have a choice. Yeah. yeah, so I can feel that as well because pro athletes have a, a sort of a limited shelf life. There's only X number of years where you will be at your peak, and post that, uh, you you with age with time, ca- the age catches up, and it's your normal. body right. is not. Yeah, it, it's absolutely normal, and you have only a, a, a limited shelf life. There is a sort of a counter ticking or a clock ticking on the top of your head. That I have to achieve in such a time. What are my aims? What are I supposed to achieve? And if you have to spend time off uh, due to injury, I, I mean, you can only you can help yourself as far as mental uh, mental stress is concerned. So, how has that process been? Have you relied on people for mental help, mental support, or are you internally driven that way? That I don't have to worry about these things. No, I mean now I'm okay. Um, if when I was talking to my mental trainer it was more in the summer when I was struggling with the with pain with mental uh, doubts and stuff. But now and I'm okay. I got to spend time with my friends, my family. Uh, I, I hadn't been home in like I, I was I was in India once in last twenty months. So it was mm-hmm. it was tough. You know, I stayed I stayed mm-hmm. away. So when I came back, I was I was okay. I I, I was much better. I was in a better place space. uh in november than i was in the whole year or whole summer yeah nice so theek uh, hai moving on from the depressing talks of the injury you just said that you <laughs> uh <laughs> you were in india only once over the last 20 months where all have you been i mean we so as a layman as a casual viewer we see tennis players playing on mm-hmm. uh, uh, challenger tournaments playing on playing in grand slams etc uh, we have we have very little idea of what goes on behind the scenes what goes on between the tournaments so uh, right. uh, i'm i'm sure you would know we had a chat with somdev a while back mm-hmm. uh, about his career his journey and he was telling us it is it is non stop hustle from one right. country to another in a, within a week you're playing in three countries tell us yeah. more what is it like what, how much toll does it take on you or how or do you enjoy it enjoy that much of a travel so <clears throat> i tell you a funny story uh <laughs> so we were playing davis cup in croatia in 2020 okay and this mm. is in march india versus croatia yeah finished the tie uh finished the tie saturday evening took mm. a saturday sunday 6 am flight okay So I went, uh, yeah, I went uh, Zagreb, Zagreb, London, London, <clears throat> London, Cali. From there, yeah. So London, Cali is like what I think thirteen hour flight, twelve hour, eleven, twelve hour yeah, flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I get down, open my phone, get an email from ATP saying Indian Wells has been cancelled. Wow. Ah. So I was like, oh, oh man, fuck. oh man. Okay, so and at that time, nobody knew what is going to happen, right? Everyone was thinking mm. a day, uh, I mean, yeah. a week or two week, three week. So we stayed few days. So we drove to Indian Wells. There's another two, three hours from uh, from LA. Uh, <clears throat> got there, uh, practice for five days. Boom, six weeks lockdown. Six weeks uh, lockdown. Okay. <laughs> so we go back, get the flight. I had to. we couldn't it was it was this i'm telling it was this packed that we couldn't even get on a call with a turkish airline so we had to leave those that ticket buy another one get back to germany then lockdown happened right six weeks became three months three and a half months then the tournament started in august august uh, for for men's uh, check was the first one to start challengers and the first uh, atp tournaments was the uh Cincinnati and and the US Slam in New York. Right. And uh <clears throat> getting to New York it's a big thing, a uh, big slam. <laughs> People trying out for for the first time what bubble means, you know. And it was it yeah. was one one it was nice to see uh mm. you know people t- actually trying to host tournaments, you know, trying their best but uh, to bring back life to normal. Yeah, yeah those days were tough getting getting uh, <laughs> getting your <laughs> getting getting tested every second. We we really had you almost feel violated, second. no? <laughs> we we all we almost had test every second day. Every forty eight hours, you could say for two three months, I had a test every alternate oh, day. 
<laughs> uh, tough. I don't Those days were tough. You at all. Yeah. Don't envy you at yeah. all. But uh, this happened, then came back to India. This is when I came back to India in November, went back. Um, for me, the base is Germany. So if I'm not playing tennis mm. tournaments, if I'm practice, if it's a practice week, I'm in Germany. Tournaments is uh, mostly summer is Europe for us. Um, uh, Jan is Australia. Feb, you have two options. Either you go back indoors in Europe or you go to South America on outdoor clay. Uh, mm. After July, August, July, you can move to uh, towards uh, states and Canada, and then September, October is indoors in Europe, or you go outdoors in Asia. So this is the schedule. And I don't course, see an off season week, there. I off season off is season. only off season for us is December. Uh, then mm. depending on how 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 well you do, how many tournaments you need to play, you can stop according to it in, in November. Some people stop first week of November. Some people who are like close to 100 who wants to break, they will play till the mm. December first week or November last week. So it mm. just all depends what uh, what ranking you are. Yeah, that's a grinding schedule, man. That's a it's a grind. It's schedule. 11 month, almost 11 month long uh, uh, season, which you don't get to see in in too many sports. Any sport, very long. any sport. This is the only it's, sport. It's tough. 11 months, it's man. tough, and 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 you have to travel so much. That's another thing. It's huh. a grind. So you were talking about bubbles uh, life. Uh, for uh, again, as, as layman, we assume that you would be sitting in or uh, staying in fancy hotels, eating in, uh, in ordering in all the time. So, so for an average Joe, it's it's not really a problem. But I I uh, I was having a conversation with a friend who is a commentator, and he was telling me about it. And he was like, "Yeah, one room me band rehte ho, tum pure chola din tak. You can't step out. It is maddening." So uh, when we went to US Open, uh, hmm. so the bubble for for tennis players was you cannot leave the hotel. Hmm. You do the test. So let's say you arrive from the airport. Okay. Hmm. You arrive hmm. from the airport, you go into the hotel. Before doing hmm. anything, first thing you got to do is the test. You hmm. do the test, you check in, go to your room. Hmm. Now you self-isolate yourself till you get a result. Sometimes hmm. like 24 hours, 30 hours, 20 hours, all the meals yeah. will be served in your room. Hmm. <clears throat> Once you have the test, you can go practice. You can start doing hmm. normal things, but still. Hmm. So going to practice, that means... You take the courtesy cards, go to the tennis mm. court. You can stay as long as you want the tennis court. But when you come back, you come back, you go to your room, hotel. You cannot Straight leave to the, the room. Hotel. Yes. You cannot, you cannot mm. leave the hotel. It was like this. Uh, first few weeks were okay. But mm. we tennis player did it for 10 months, which became a <laughs> little bit tough at the end. A lot of injuries were happening. A lot of people were struggling mentally. Because hmm. for ten months to do this is not easy. It's not yeah. easy. And it's a it's a glorified. Uh, of, it sounds like a glorified jail here. Yeah. And one of the hardest uh, self isolate or whatever you want to call was in Australia last year. Uh, last year, yeah. Hmm. There, so uh, I I think I think Australia what they did was extreme, but I understand why they did it extreme because they were trying to save their uh, uh, public you know they had extreme mm. hard rules for them so i understand but there were so many things which didn't make sense so one day someone knocked at my door i i heard a knock let's put it this way i opened the door <laughs> in next two two hours i got a call from the health ministry saying uh, why did you open a door this is a warning for you the next fuck? time you do that you'll be out of the hotel and go to the, uh, the fuck? covid covid hotel <laughs> Oh my goodness! That was so extreme. Wow. They didn't have to do this, but but yeah, they didn't have to do this, but yeah, it was so extreme. So they're monitor- monitoring every door and every athlete. So so in 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 Australia, so there what happened was there were two type of uh, isolation. One where we could mm. practice for five hours. I was mm. one, I was luckily I was one of them because we had no positive case on our on our aircraft. The mm. People who had a positive mm. case on our aircraft, they were screwed, doomed. <laughs> they could not leave. They could not do anything. Okay, everyone. They got an email saying everyone had to. Uh, people who were on that plane, everyone had to do a hard fourteen day uh, lockdown. Some people did fifteen days. <laughs> people who arrived early. Man. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, yeah. And people who were like like us who could practice, we would get an email every day, every night before morning. Mm-hmm. 
uh, some days would be a seven seven a.m. practice. Some day would be a three p.m. practice. So you had no idea. So you, so you would have to get ready. Let's say if it's seven o'clock, you get ready at six fifty five. You stand next to the road like this, <laughs> and you're waiting. You're like tuck tuck. You're like. <laughs> And we, I mean, we couldn't run. We couldn't run anywhere because it was, a, it was just a, like a. a you were driving through courtesy cars only. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And these, yeah, and then not even courtesy car. We we had like two two healthcare people with us in in car to go to drop us, wait there, come hmm. back. Uh, it was. I mean, how they did it was very nice, as in to like manage and stayed, uh, made sure like nobody had uh, COVID. uh after those period we uh tennis player didn't cause any any trouble any drama uh with with covid but uh yeah was what that was the toughest toughest two weeks toughest <laughs> two days so so with i've i've heard from i've read from multiple sources i've re- heard from a few sources as well that uh the locker room banter is one of the most exciting parts of uh, uh, uh being a pro tennis player I mean, is is that is that fact or is it just something that uh, people have made up to just to give an appearance ke ha everyone gets on behind the scenes everyone is pally and all i think it used to be it has changed a bit it's very hmm. like i don't think the locker room uh, stage is the same how it used to be because i think there's a lot of older players and and younger players you know what i mean it's it's yeah, just like this right now so most yeah. of the players yeah most of the players are above 30 32 and then suddenly there are 40 players who are 22 23 you know so i think the gap has the gap is massive uh mm. and i mean I, i i have not seen too much here and there of course um mm. uh, francis tiafo is the funniest 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 guy on the tour he just doesn't leave anyone uh he's from america <laughs> a really good player grew up playing juniors um uh, then there's uh, there's also nick uh mm. so there there are a few people who always likes to take you know someone's case but uh, but i would say it's, it's not it's not too much these days it's not too much these days is there a is there a whatsapp group where you compare the quarantine rules of different countries that you're in ke yahan pe meri itni mari ja rahi hai tum log chill kar rahe ho there there is a group but uh, we we are not <laughs> talking about these things right now <laughs> used to be used to be last year but i think everyone just had enough you know because, because yeah so they they've just given up on it <laughs> nice uh so we trying to take a step back from uh, the stage that you are at now uh, you've obviously started playing tennis very early uh, in in your life uh, you've won the juniors uh, boys championship as well from wimbledon so i i've played uh, tennis at a very very semi pro level myself uh, but the sense that i get from reading up uh, about the sport in india the infra that should be there probably to encourage uh, more and more pe- people picking up the rackets and just trying to make tennis as a career uh, the support by the authorities uh, isn't really there uh, have you faced something similar uh, in your career so we've obviously read stuff about you being not you not being a part of the davis cup team for a while there have been instances a lot of instances but see I I played tennis I played cricket myself cricket ke liye infra mein jo quality ka output hai that's that's completely different level every second road every second town you have a very good academy for cricket uh, tennis ke liye mujhe utna nahi dikhta hai tennis ke liye uh, it is the accessibility is lower uh, the number of outlets are lower the number of avenues where you can go train are lower uh, then the amount of encouragement that families give to kids who who are aspiring to become tennis players are lower uh for example agar do bhai hai aur ek tennis khelta hai cricket khelta hai to cricket wale ko bola jayega ha tu khel tu khel of course so of course so how has your experience been with that see i can i can name and say lot of lot of things you know but <laughs> if i say those things this is not going to put me in a good spot after that so of course of two course. things i'm just going to say is that uh we are missing out on a on a on a on a system we don't have a proper system where people where the right uh, uh coaches are leading it uh, one is this um <clears throat> i 
I remember Somde was trying something a few years back. I just wish that would have, you know, gone along. Would have would be nice to to practice with the best tennis players, best Indian tennis player to be in India to get coached by really good coaches as well. Sadly, it didn't work out. <clears throat> and I think the biggest problem in India is that uh, people see tennis. A lot of coaches. I know. I know. I'm gonna get a lot of hate, but it's okay. It's it's the truth. Um, they see tennis as as a as a business and not as a sport. You know what I mean? Um, mm. um, where they see, okay, I've got three extra kids. That means extra this much extra money. But I don't think any. I I don't. I can't name too many coaches who comes to a court tennis court with a with a paper with a pen says, okay, listen, uh, ABC, this is what we're gonna do today. This is our program. I've not seen it in last mm. fifteen mm. years, fourteen years. I've I've mm. been to a lot of tennis academies. I've seen a lot of players, a lot of coaches, but I don't see professionalism. I don't see uh, I don't see the hunger in, in in coaches to you know to come out, be there uh, before the kid, you know, uh, plan out the plan out the day, plan out the week, and mm. till mm. this is gonna happen, there's not gonna be a difference. It's in it's gonna tennis gonna stay like this and. Mm-hmm. And that's the sad part because you know everyone expects you to win, but they don't understand how tough the sport has become now, how yeah. how tough the journey is. Because at the same time, you're competing with players who comes from a tennis family, who comes f- from uh, from a tennis country, which <laughs> which makes a difference, which makes a huge huge difference. I think you being stationed out of Germany is a testament to that. The- facilities in germany would be significantly better than they are in india of course of course you cannot you cannot name me one tennis player who's done well well and who stayed in india not one every player that i know from past 20 30 years who's done well on mm-hmm. atp tour has stayed abroad so that just shows you that how behind we are it's like this yep <laughs> can can we do something about it at an individual level to maybe increase awareness about it or maybe uh, yeah but even if you increase awareness what happens where are the good coaches where are the good tennis courts where are the good clubs hmm. it's like this there are a lot of things you can't go to a private club and and get a court at whatever time you want you know you cannot play 6 to 11 because members plays and you cannot play 3 to 6 because member plays so it's like this uh and uh, <laughs> it is like this <laughs> i agree and that's the sad truth that is the sad go, truth yeah. how many how many good clay courts do we have in india zero oh, why because <laughs> not yeah. none i can like i said i can name many many things but it just has no impact it doesn't make a difference it just stays the same thing next morning is going to be same thing it's not going to be there's not going not going to be any change you would have thought but ki uh, with so so every sport every sport has its ascendance in a nation with uh, the establishment of a few heroes uh, for example in case of cricket cricket wasn't a, a nationwide phenomena until we won the 83 world cup or until we won uh, we had heroes like uh, say, say sachin or a, or a dravid or a ganguly right uh, we we aspire towards heroes that's how a sport progresses in a right. country uh, we've had right. heroes in tennis as well we've had uh, pace right. and bhupati we've ha- we've had somde we've had sanya we've had you so we we are not at a dearth of heroes and i i see i see the enthusiasm in kids wanting to play tennis uh, so in my society as well uh, my courts are quite occupied with very very young kids who want to play tennis so the intent to play tennis is there but i'm not sure of the avenues to uh, harness that energy am i right, coming from a right place <clears throat> I, that, that is that is there and i think and when you when you're talking about heroes i think we still lack a bit um because we didn't have big big results where we would say you know going playing deep in single slam um what leander achieved in olympics was was huge uh, he's the only mm. one who's got a medal in in a lot in, in tennis in olympics mm. Mm. <clears throat> other than that you know um i think in last 20 25 years second round i think is the best result we have done which is if you look at it is is not that great you know uh we definitely need to get better there you know to start having if if we if 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 we can start having some results in singles in slams and like you no know, thousands and 
that's where the impact comes. You know, you you play for a few years in and out, be top 20, top 30, because being top 20, 30, that means you're making third, fourth round of every every tournament. Mm. So that that mm. is, you know, that is that is pretty big. So I think if mm. if if we can achieve that, I think things will make a difference. And then I mean whoever does this will have a will have a saying, you know, will have a saying and then and, and lot of in a lot of different views. And I think that's when mm. the impact comes. Fair enough. Uh, you just spoke about Leander and his performance uh, in the Olympics. So, uh, obviously, tennis players, pro tennis players, uh, play in challenges, Grand Slams, etc. And then they also play for their country, uh, like right. in a Davis Cup, say, or in Olympics. Uh, as a pro player yourself, who has done both quite well, uh, is there a mental difference that you feel when you are out there on the court in a challenger it's... or a Grand Slam? or? It's a little bit more pressure, I, I feel, when you play Davis Cup uh, Asian Games okay. slash Olympics mm. because you know the country is watching. Uh, mm. You know how important these games are in India. Um, mm. for, for, I'm, I'm talking about as, a, as an Indian Indian mm. tennis player. Yeah. Um, yeah. When yeah. you play challengers and ATP events and, you know, the, you know even if you don't do well, there's a tournament next week, you know. So to this, at least you're okay with it. Uh, mm. As in, mm. as in, you know, there's another chance. But with Asian Games and all, where they come for every four years, it's not easy. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why you have extra pressure thinking, okay, see, uh, I have to... I mean, everyone wants to do well. Nobody wants to go to Asian Games, Olympic Games to just to click some pictures and come back. You know, everyone <laughs> wants to do well. So the pressure, pressure is already there. And some sports yeah. where they have uh, one or two events a year, just imagine, you know, they they they're thinking for that for that same moment from past six six months going to bed mm, thinking yeah, about you know, yeah. and then well, finally they come. It's it's not easy. They're like, wow, you know, it's we made it. Or that's when the pressure comes, and then and then on the other hand, you have to perform as well. Mm. So I think the pressure pressure in these tournaments it's is very much high comparing to when you play individually on ATP two. What was the adulation or attention like when you beat Istomin in the in the first round of the My, Istomin? Uh, that match was that match was something because it was so hot. So I <laughs> so I, I just so the biggest problem was I had not trained before that. Okay, I just had taken mm. taken two weeks off because of my head, and uh, mm. <clears throat> and, I, and and I had not played for 11, 12 days. And first day when I came to Tokyo is when I I practiced with Ankita and Sanya in the evening. And I was dying. I was dying. <laughs> and so I get to practice a day or two, not much. Um, hmm. Go on the court. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we played at 11. We played for almost three hours. Okay. Uh, won the first set. Second set. Got a, I think I, I, I got, uh, he broke me at four all, if I'm not wrong. And then he served out. Hmm. Second set, hmm. third set, it was four all, and I was love 40 down. Hmm. Uh, he had three break points, and I was like, oh, goodness, man. Like, I, <laughs> I play for two and a half hours to, like, you know, to lose like this. Probably not. So, I, somehow, I played well that game, held the game. Next game, he just fell apart, I think, maybe because he, hmm. he thought, you know. Because it was, it was like this. The second you fall behind, you were done. Because you mm. know the heat is so much, it's, mm. it's killing mm -hmm. you, it's the humidity. Mm. So we were playing around, let's say, counting a court temperature around 30, 38, 39 with 85% humid. With 85% okay. humid. So it was, yeah. the condition was brutal, okay? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and after third day is when they decided the matches, they're going to start matches after 3 p.m. So we were <laughs> the first one to play at 11. Because everyone, they said, why are we playing at 11 o'clock? Because huh. first of all, there are not too many matches, okay? Yeah. They had enough yeah. courts. There were not too many matches. Hmm. They had 16 courts. So that's that's a lot. 15 or 16 courts, that's a lot of lot of match courts. So even if yeah. you start at 3, they had lights on every court. So they hmm. said, hmm. if we play at 3, we can play at 3, 5, 7. It's still enough. Hmm. Three rounds. Hmm. Hmm. So why are we playing at 11? And that's when the ITF took the stand saying, right. But that was after <laughs> okay, and then uh, and then uh, yeah, and then for all uh, I held that game. He went to serve. Hmm. I broke him. I, when I won, it was a very much relief, and I was like, "Thank God, I can get out of the court after three hours of this this condition." 
and that, that day was was nice because I remember we were having dinner and then Joko jo- Novak came and he's like, hmm. ah, w- it was quite a match. I saw three hours in the sun. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> I remember that part. Ugh. So, it was not easy. so obviously the first player to win a singles match on the on the first one in 25 years history being made. Uh, Overnight social media followers बढ़े काफी सारे overnight बहुत सारे ऐसे messages आ रहे हैं कि wow you created history of course of course fans are fans are always there that the first one friends and family are the first one to message you know mm-hmm. saying good job this and that but it's mm-hmm. tough to keep a keep an eye on everything because when this happened it happens so fast that you mm-hmm. actually don't know what is what just happened you know um, <laughs> and the people who have your WhatsApp mass WhatsApp number and stuff you know that, that's where mm-hmm. you Okay, those are your your close ones, you know. Those that's where you pay attention. I mean, mm. uh, but like you know, let's say you go on Instagram, they're just, for example, you just got like ten thousand followers. It's tough to keep an eye on like every ten thousand, right? <laughs> so that's why it gets a little tricky there. But uh, but it's nice. It's nice. Uh, nice, you know, that people people want to be a part of journey. You know, people are there to support me, uh, support tennis. It's it's nice to see mm. this. Do you think social media has uh, come as a help to sports people because uh, earlier so as you were talking about it earlier there is always a clock ticking on the top of your head that this is the amount of playing time that i'll get in my life uh, this is the amount of money i can make in these many years uske baad i'll have to manage somehow uh, i see social media helping out with a lot of uh, areas where this similar uh, age wala factor comes in like in for example in Uh, in the movie business as well in the uh, in the sh- in the glamour industry as well uh, i also see it in, in the sports industry where people sign up with brands uh, to promote brands on social media it it helps as an extra avenue of income it gives you an extra extra uh, support as far as the monetary aspect is concerned you, you think that that has helped uh, uh, the budding players or do you think it it also might act as a distraction when you start paying more attention think, towards that aspect i think it has pros and cons about it um hmm. uh, pros like you, you pros you were just talking about it how how uh how it helps you sometimes you know you are in a tricky situation you put a tweet you know people come out and hmm. help you a uh, hmm. lot of lot of uh, examples like this and then the cons i would say is where you know you you've probably seen uh, how much people criticize athletes you know you if 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 i played a match and i lost i can send you 10 or 15 screenshots <laughs> of messages where you just get abused you know but but they don't know because they they're betting on you they they don't know what you're going through you know but hmm. but that, that that is where i feel like you have to do something to stop it and i don't know i don't mm. have an answer i don't know mm. how you can stop this but i think people just have to be have to man up and like you know listen like this is not this is not right you don't go out and abuse mm. and, and and in india i think nobody get more abused than cricketers in uh, in india yeah. you know they they yeah. they the, they worship them but at the same time they hate them which i don't understand how like how can you do this one time one time you're the best and second time you're like you don't know how to play this and that and and with 10 different abusing wo- abuse words you know which is, doesn't make sense which doesn't even make sense so that's that's the that's the sad part about it that's the that's the only mm. sad part about it yeah I I find it very funny है मतलब घर में बैठा कोई टीवी के सामने अपने काउच में बता रहा है कि हाँ तुम्हें फोर हैंड ऐसे ही खेलना चाहिए था तुम्हें स्ट्रेट ड्राइव ऐसे ही खेलना चाहिए तुम कौन होते हो यार उनको बताने वाले यार I get I get messages email saying uh, listen this how you should play and then these are the <laughs> people who who are not abusing which is fine okay but like don't have to you don't have to because you're not playing on this level you don't know what yeah. is happening right mm-hmm. you you people come up saying to me yeah when I when I was playing Roger they're like yeah play to his back and i said thanks man thanks imagine <laughs> if it was if if things were that easy why how why would he win 20 slams you know why would he be the one of the best tennis player ever just play to his back and this is this this i don't get it this i don't get it how how was it playing roger by the way uh, so is there a significant difference so you play a lot of top 10 top 20 players uh, in your uh, in your everyday career you play a lot of them so is he a step above or uh, is it more in the mind 
I mean, I think it's the way he plays. You know, he's uh, he's known for changing points very quick. He he likes mm. to play fast. He's not a guy who mm. likes to rally. Who who just go behind rallies, and make yeah. balls. You know, yeah, like mm. you know, with with Rafa and Joko, you always feel like you're in the rally. But with mm. them, it's one thing. Is like you don't see a way winning that rally, but you feel you're there. <laughs> That's the thing. You can get into rallies with them, but that's it. That's pretty much. With Roger, they'll you grind you up. Yeah. Exactly. With Roger, you can win points and and games and stuff. But but in a in a four set, when I played like four sets against him, there are probably fifteen different things he did. You know, mixing up with second serves, coming to the net, going for big second serve, uh, hitting slice short slices, taking balls early on the mm-hmm. forehand side, then going back and hitting heavy. This, that, this, that. He can do everything, and that's what makes mm. him so dangerous. Because you don't know what he's going to do on the next ball because he, he has so many options. Hmm. So that's that's where the biggest difference is. And like, and plus he likes to play fast. So you are not used to his rhythm because when someone is serving, you have to get ready to use to, uh, get ready when he's serving. So you have to match his rhythm. And for for a lot of players, his rhythm is pretty fast. And that is not, you know, when, mm. because if you play, let's say, sixty matches a year, eighty matches a year, and you play at a certain level, certain certain speed, and then boom, Roger comes. Roger, he's rushing you. He's like fifteen love, thirty love, this, that, this. It it, it throws you off, you know. It throws you off. Ah, that that's why he's he's one of the best to ever yeah. play this sport. Like, yeah, if you look at if you look at Rafa, he likes to play slow. He'll finish a point. Mm. He'll go towel, use the towel yeah, nicely. Yeah, routine, takes, you know, yeah. he'll bounce. He'll bounce few times. Does this? Then he'll, he'll do his routine where you feel like you are in the in the in the in the match. You're not being yeah. rushed. Yeah. But yeah. like I said, but when you go in the rallies, you don't see a way out. <laughs> when you, you start in the baseline after two goals, <laughs> another meter behind. After two, two feet rallies, behind, two feet behind. <laughs> You keep going, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why that's where these guys are deadly. Him hmm. and Joko, nice. yeah. Joko, Joko's rise has been phenomenal, man. I mean, uh, he was the outsider of the of these two initially. Roger and Rafa were the key guys. Okay, but so Joko's rise has been absolutely yeah. astronomical. But yeah, yeah, yeah. kudos to him. What what he's changed in in his life and his and his career is it's not easy. Phenomenal. It's not easy yeah. going to gluten free, gluten free to vegan, vegan to getting into uh, meditation, meditation to yoga, yoga. This that he's tried everything, and, and mm. it's it takes it takes a lot of guts to do that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it is all about percentages. No, you you are already there. It is about that that incremental one percent that you can uh, put out of your body. Yeah, so that right. helps. Over the last two months, you have been rehabbing, uh, recovering from the injury. What all have you binged on Netflix? Uh, what all have you gorged? <laughs> so I'm a huge anime fan, right? Nice, uh, I, nice. Yeah, so I, I watch a lot of animes, and unfortunately, India does not have a wide range of yep. animes on Netflix yep. or Crunchyroll. Yep. Uh, right now, I am. I there's. Uh, so right now, I'm watching this random stand-up. Uh, comedians doing the the doing their thing nice. uh on youtube so that's what i'm watching right now uh the, every sunday i watch demon slayer it's another it's nice. an anime yeah yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, other than that netflix i pretty much watched <laughs> everything <laughs> not everything but i've watched a lot of things you the have things finished that, netflix i have the things that i've not watched is that i don't want to watch so it's, it's like mm. this so i don't know what to watch any uh, uh Yeah, I need I need a recommendation. <laughs> I need to find out what to watch. Have you, have you watched Arrested Development? No, it's good. Watch the. Uh, it's it's on Hotstar. I'm not sure if you have access to Hotstar. Hotstar yeah, uh, okay. you should watch okay. it. If you okay, uh, if you like smart comedy genre, Arrested Development is something that you definitely should watch. Okay, I'll, I'll so look into it. So it's it's what made the Russo brothers famous. The Russo brothers who are at the helm of the Avengers franchise, no. Uh, they planned out okay. the entire Avengers franchise, so that this was their claim to fame. So it it's an old okay. series. It it was there in two thousand five okay. or something, but oh, okay, I would wow. definitely recommend. It. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it was we'll, their we'll claim to fame. Ar- okay. Watch Arrested Development. <laughs> okay. So with, it has been that. an absolute pleasure to speak to you, man. I mean, it's it's felt like talking to a friend, and that is all. All the credit goes to you for that. And uh, <laughs> I wish to see you on the court very very soon. I hope. 
to see you make a very speedy recovery from your injury. I'm sure you're already halfway there and very, very soon we'll see you on the tennis court winning matches uh, for yourself and winning more medals for India. Uh, thank you for taking time out. It was lovely speaking to you. Like I said, pleasure is all mine. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the invite. It was, was fun. Thank you so much. Uh,